In our time, name was forbidden. We weren't allowed to use our our name. We had a number. Oh. That's the, the first day that I get to uh, Christmas Island, they give me a number. And even when I came to the court, federal court, in Perth, the judge asked my number, and I said, I don't have number. My mom used to call me Adam. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is the court. We tell you how to uh, tell your name or to identify yourself. And then I didn't say my, my number. So I don't know what is happened now. Is it number or name? If you have to know the name, then you send the letter. A piece of paper, just like maybe welcome. That makes hope. I remember when I was in detention, when I was in detention, we were fighting. There was a big list who got the letter, so we have to go to the office to get the number. So the officer would come ask us, okay, make a line. Who cares about line? Just F.O. We get our hope there. So please, keep sending letters and photos. And even video, if they can't access to the internet, so upload it to YouTube, just tell them that watch what we are doing for you. Thank you very much. It's certainly still the case that although government policy now says they're not supposed to call people by numbers, uh, the Human Rights Commission has found that that practice is still widespread. And Refugee Rights Action Network members, when we were visiting Leonora Detention Center and visiting with the boys, uh, discovered that it was routine practice to refer even to the teenage boys by their numbers. And uh, we had at least two groups of visitors who witnessed officers referencing boys by numbers and actually boys responding on the basis of, of those numbers. So it's obviously so common that even the boys themselves, uh, that's how they know each other.